So to kick off this community call, uh, we have a presentation from Anton. Uh, Anton, for a little while, has been beating the drum that our incentive structure is kind of antiquated and doesn't necessarily like encourage the behaviors that ideally we like to see on Research Hub. So he's done a little bit of thinking about um, how we could potentially have new incentives that cause people to create like higher quality content and in theory made the community a little bit more inviting. So we're thinking about just letting Anton run his own essentially incentive program where we can kind of experiment with like different rewards for different behaviors with the end goal of like trying to actually gather data on what might work the best to actually implement into Research Hub's app. So Anton, do you want to take it away? Sure. Uh, perhaps to to start the conversation, maybe like so there are some users here, right, present, and it would be really nice to hear like what what needs to happen, like what do you need to fail and not fail, like as in negative emotions to participate in Research Hub more frequently. Like, why don't you post a comment every day? No, no judgment, just curiosity. To kick it off from my end, because I don't even post comments every day, it's a lot of work. <laughs> like, of work. You have to read a paper, you have to like actually understand it and add a comment. Um, even when like posting hypotheses, like I'd kind of like peripherally scan papers and add stuff. And then like there was an MD PhD who came in and was like, oh wow, like you did not understand these citations properly. So it's just a time commitment. Okay, what about uh, less effort demanding activities like maybe interacting with other with other people, like commenting on a comment. Uh, again, the reason for me, uh, same as uh, what uh, Joyce mentioned, but also I already have platforms where I will get a much better return for the effort that I put in. So if I'm about to post a paper on Twitter, I will get much more value than on Research Hub. And that is the main reason why I'm using Twitter and not Research Hub primarily. What do you mean by value? I mean, I have some network that will see this and recognize some value in it, and I will get some recognition for that. Uh, so I can share the value with uh, external community and other people. Um, and there's just less of it in my network, at least uh, on Research Hub. OK, OK. What, what about the rest of you guys? Yeah, I think, uh, <clears throat> I think for me, it's a uh, really um yeah like everyone said it's, it takes time but it's also i don't really know a lot about these topics um i know about some topics but i don't know about a lot of topics and even re even replying to a comment requires me to understand the comments like context and uh, which references the paper which requires like a bunch of reading um and interestingly enough dragon you mentioned twitter don't know if it's um, just wanted to throw it out there like in research hub but comments and things like that are much more detailed twitter less detailed more to the point i don't know if there is something here but uh, i just throw in some things in my mind there is more less detail more to the point so basically the the content you consume and produce is in smaller chunks you know bite-sized chunks that are easier to digest i think that's very important Mm -hmm, for sure. Also, another thing is the sentiment. Uh, I know that if I share things on Twitter, uh, it's a much more relaxed community and people will just retweet and easily share uh, further. Uh, on Research Hub, it seems like there is a uh, like higher expectation because the content needs to be of a decent quality to be considered kind of high quality research. So, um, yeah, th that's another reason. Like, th there's less risk if I post it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. okay. I guess uh, like from Twitter perspective, the one thing that, uh, you know, like uh, I think emotions play a big role in these things. And I think with Twitter, things are sometimes more fun. Um, with Research Hub right now, I think there is less fun factor. It's more like, uh, yeah, I guess not fun. Whatever That's exactly what we want to change, right? We want Research right. Hub to be fun and interesting. Let's actually start with the presentation because we might run out of time. Right, can you all see? Can you see my stuff? I don't see you, so please say something. It looks good. Yes. All right, excellent. 
So we, as we use research hub and other people, we experience all sorts of emotions, right? Some are more conducive to you staying there. Some are more repulsive, let's say. So we want people to feel in a certain way and to not feel in a certain way. So first of all, it doesn't need to feel like a burden, right? So if you, when, when you picture a scenario where you're like, okay, I'm going to sit down and do something in the research hub and you, you feel the need to procrastinate a bit, that's a bad sign. We, don't, we want to get rid of that feeling. Another part that may be part of the issue why you would rather post on Twitter than here, it's the unappreciativeness, right? Yes, the user base is small, but even th there is some user base. Still, I think we could do better to make your content be perceived by yourself as more seen and appreciated by others. Uh, par partially for the power uh, user program, it can get, you can get in the mindset that things they need to do on research hub. And yeah, I said need, you actually, you do need, you have to do them, right? Rather than you choosing to do them, right? Especially if you are in some sort of power user program in this one or another one, you have a set of goals that you are behind on and you it, it gets into a drag and it's not even your decision anymore. Another thing is you are, it's unclear what exactly you need to do to gain rewards and the rewards can be both the monetary rewards or the social rewards as in other people will upvote and, and like appreciate what I submitted. And another po po potentially big part, maybe for not everyone in here, but for some people is in the problem with the platform where you can potentially spend infinite amount of time to try to achieve something is if they don't limit you at all, there is a high chance among like really engaged people that they will do a lot in a very short span of time and they will basically burn out and they will never log in again, even though they might have been converted into regular users. So we don't want any of those. What we want is the opposite. We want you when you are about to go post something, I don't want you to be afraid that like other people will judge me or something. I want you to anticipate the joy, like being noticed by other people, being upvoted, being rewarded, being appreciated, all that stuff. We want you to feel that it, it does, it's not a like all day effort. It's not an all day quest. Like you need to cancel your plans, cancel the laundry, cancel the vacuuming cancel picking up kids from the daycare, I'm doing stuff for research hub. No, it needs to be a bite-sized effort that you can squeeze in between other stuff you do in your life. There is this thing that we can use in moderation that's typically in research called fear of missing out. This is uh, exactly the feeling that compulsively forces you to look at the notifications of your phone, uh, phone screen just because you People are very uncomfortable. People are more uncomfortable losing something than gaining the same amount, like, for example, in money. And we want to tap into that, but carefully. And uh, also, there needs to be... So the closer the reward is to the action that led to this reward in time or in extra actions, the easier it is for you. And for you, I mean... Like for, for you to emotionally feel that they are tied, right? You can intellectually understand that you have to do something boring and, and unnecessary right now to benefit in a year, but that's you powering through it. We don't want that. We want you to feel that you want to click the button and, or do or post a comment. And that leads us to the, the, the opposite of burnout, right? There are, you can probably imagine uh, examples that you use there are some activities that are limited, right? They, you, you would like to do more, but you just can't, right? So in the new revised power user program, I want to captivate this feeling of like, yes, I finished all the tasks for today. And I mean, I'm even, I have energy and time for more. I can't, right? This is a limited resource. I want to do it. Okay. So. If those are the feelings we are shooting for and shooting against, right, these negative feelings, uh, these are, I think, the more problematic areas of the incentive structure right now. So I'm not trying to 
uh, bash the existing structure, just trying to identify the areas for improvement. So uh, right now, it can be a little bit lonely on Research Hub, right? Because you can just produce content without even talking to other people, which is fine, but maybe it's not, not exactly what we want to go for. There is no motivation for you personally to spend research coin right now, especially given that typically it is smart to hold on to crypto. The, the hoarding tendencies are hard, you know, are hardwired in many users. And there is right now little to no reason to actually spend your research coin, just accumulate. Uh, the tasks that, well, right now the incentive program is mostly focused on uploading papers and commenting on these papers. And that can be quite an endeavor, especially given the time frame of one week. If you waited an entire week, you have to think of all these seven tasks at once that you have to complete to achieve the research going and whatnot. Uh, and that can be a problem in terms of motivation, of course. And uh, of course, that's not exactly a problem that so much it is part of the design. Right now, it's kind of hard to figure out what are the best actions you can do on the website to you know, be efficient. There is, like I mentioned, there is limited reason to log in frequently. You can just like log in once a week, right? If you are a part of the current power user program, which is not very conducive to, you know, to habituated behavior, let's say. And just to reiterate, the likelihood of someone else reading your comments and responding to them right now is relatively low. You will probably have more success just uploading the pa paper and hoping someone else will glance at it, but maybe not the comments, right? The, and I think that is even disp disproportionately the feature compared to the number of users we have now. Even with the limited user base, I think there could be changes that will lead to users to like redirect their attention towards uh, interacting with other people versus with themselves and the website. And there is, I've, I thought this for myself, like why would I bother another person out there I know that could potentially be a viable user for Research Hub there is no incentive. Okay, so how can we tackle all this? Well, I propose, I'm a st strong proponent of the once per day activities. This way they are, first of all, one day is a smaller unit than one week. So you, the likelihood of you accumulating tasks you haven't finished and you feel, and you feel about them as a burden is way less. And second of all, it, it's more conducive to creating this fear of missing out in a healthy dose, right? So you don't want to be anxious, but you also, because like if you skip one day, that's okay, I guess, but there is no coming back, but you you are not, you're not doomed, right? You just continue doing what you were doing before. Okay, so this is a proposed set of activities that you might do on research app and you get rewarded and the values are not like set in stone and Patrick, uh, let me know if those sound reasonable or whether we need to increase or decrease them, or perhaps it's going to be a temporary thing just for the new, you know, st starting uh, power users. Perhaps later we will tone it down after we get a stable user base. But yeah, right now, similar to what we have now, exactly the same, actually submit an interesting paper, you get a hundred research coins. Okay, so now the more burdensome activity that's optional, right? You can just stop here uh, is you explaining what's up with this paper. And I think that's important, right? Because we want to go for quality of content, not quantity, because quantity without quality is just noise. It's actually detracting for uh, people to see a bunch of articles they don't understand. It would be overwhelming for them. We want them to view some articles, but articles that are, let's say, pre-digested for them for more knowledgeable users. Okay, now this other feature, and I think I'm a big fan of it, let me know what you think about it, is spend REC to earn REC. How does it work? You will have some REC, so what you can do with them is you can find the comment that you liked, 
other, that other user posted, not yourself, you leave a response to this comment, something approving or disapproving, right? So you, you could be like, okay, so that's, that's what I think in response to your thinking, or this is the question I have after reading it, or I agree with it, that's why. So it's more or less elaborate, it doesn't need to be like a whole passage, an essay. So what you do is you find such a comment, for example, this one, right? And you donate, support it with REC uh, up to 200 per day. And what happens is the another person in this scenario, me, who is supervising the Power User Program, will find this comment and will reimburse you double what you have just donated, right? So effectively, you can make 200 uh, 200 research coins from that activity alone, right? So it can be spread among multiple comments if you want to highlight, you know, multiple offers, or it can be dumped into one comment. It doesn't matter. Perhaps, perhaps it does if you want to change it. By the way, feel free to stop me at any time because I don't see your faces or questions or comments or anything. Okay, and so another effort to make people interact with each other more is post a comment that can be small and it doesn't need to be super knowledgeable, but it needs to be filled with curiosity, right? So you have a question about the article or maybe you have a question about the rationale of the comment or maybe the hypothesis that was just posted. Something that is designed to start the conversation, right? You might get unlucky and you the conversation will not spark. However, it at least, it has a goal to start one. And right now the program is mostly manual, right? Due to our low number. So for my ease, please use hashtag question for those. So I can easily identify those in the feed. Perhaps later down the road, we will be able to implement like hidden tags in posts, right? So they are only visible to, to moderators or something that will be easier. But for now, just hashtag question. and at, adds up to 800 RSC per day, which I think is a respectable amount. So let's just summarize it again. You submit a paper, you leave a comment about this paper, right, to get 300 and 400 for uh, 100 for submitting, 400 total, and you support another comment or multiple comments, you get up to 200 from the, that, and you post a question, conversation starter of any sort, that adds up to, like I said, 800, or weekly 5k and 600, monthly 24k, yearly almost 300k, which is, I don't know what to tell you, that's a lot of coins. Uh, we don't know their current valuation, right? But that's a big number for sure. And that doesn't stop here. You can add, you can earn more. Okay, should we discuss or should, we, should I proceed yeah. to the referral program? <laughs> So one question I have, Anton, is um, is there going to be an easy way to communicate this? Like, where where can we post this so that way we can, like, show it to everybody and make sure it's, like, easily digestible what you have to do in order to earn these? Yeah, well, absolutely. Well, for that, I think uh, being open about this stuff is one of the secrets to success. So I basically will compile a manifest or a white paper or something that's, you know, very short and succinct uh description of everything i just told of mm -hmm. course if you agree on the values and everything and i will uh describe how to enroll in the power user program who to contact what to do all that stuff in you know short short and digestible format and we would distribute it through email through slack right we would have a separate channel perhaps on slack where we would handle the power user matters Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and actually, Anton, actually, like, uh, I think you shared a screenshot, I don't know, like two weeks ago or something, where you basically have a bunch of the things, a list of the things that will earn you RSC, the top left side of the mm -hmm. hub. I actually didn't like it initially because it's like a very high real estate area, but then I did like a 180 because um, I think it's like the missing, we need to like support that type of features, um, more visibility into that. Uh, so yeah, um, we can do that. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I also have a question about like if you go back one slide, if you don't mind if I ask. Uh, uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> you mentioned that there was like um, basically um, supporting a comment with 200 RSC, right? Which, which could earn you double. Mm-hmm. Is that like a lottery thing where you might get double or is that like a guarantee thing where in your mind you'll get double? That's an excellent question. Uh, I do feel like, so that list might not be a complete list. Like basically if I get good feedback from you and you would like me to come up with more tasks, daily tasks like this, I do want to introduce something that's kind of gambly. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it will be wildly yeah. successful. No, I, yeah. I. I like the gambling thing. The staking thing is um, is nice because, like, uh, we want people to put RNC into the the thing, into the system to create an economy. Right now, we have no economy, um, so I like uh, I like this sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, uh, okay. So that answers my question. Yeah, that one. That one is not conditional. We can like the. The sky is the limit here, the fantasy and the, the social psychology and the philosophy. We can make it even in a, in a dilemma type of thing, right? You, you can donate research coin, but you get your return only if the author of the original comment likes you back or something like that, you know? But it, it can get crazy if you want. If you want it to be crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think, like, one thing that comes to my mind, and I don't think it's, like, exactly related to it, but just, you know, like... Like, you know, like some idea, related idea. So Stack Overflow mm-hmm. has the bounty system, which you probably all, most of you are familiar with. And one of the things um, that the community would do in a bounty, uh, well, two things. So one thing is that if the bounty is really high, more people would see it. Uh, but then another thing to get visibility, to get the community to see something and to like engage with it, Mm-hmm. Is that um, usually like a lot of people before the the bounty closes, they'll like upvote like the um, your question to get more visibility into so that other people see mm-hmm. like oh the bounty is closing, go and reply in some fashion to the to the bounty before it closes. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking um, like this has a similar feel to it where it's like a. You're mm-hmm. putting some money in so that it becomes, you know, to start a conversation, but also it provides more visibility into it because now you supported something with 200 RC. Now maybe it shows up in the right sidebar and other people can see it. And mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just, uh, just a thought, not really going anywhere in particular. No, perhaps perhaps you're onto something. Perhaps we can, if you upvoted uh, a beginning of a thread, basically you created a thread, right? Because you replied to a comment with your own comment and supported it. Maybe mm-hmm. we could do something like by the end of the day, how many comments are in this thread, right? And whoever has the highest amount, a group of power users gets an extra or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, I'm going to think about that a little more. But okay, that mm-hmm. sounds good. Yeah, thanks, Anton. I think uh, these are all the questions I had right now. I like the daily beat that you have because it does make sense. Like you kind of want to think about it daily versus like let me have these seven tasks yeah. weekly. One yeah, it thing feels that I'm better, thinking, doesn't it? it feels it feels easier. better. It does feel mm-hmm. it feels easier. One thing I'm thinking is like, are you really gonna have like I don't know, and maybe you don't, and maybe it's not a problem because like it's fine but like i was thinking are you really gonna have like i don't know 365 interesting papers every day to upload oh yeah you know, that's quite, quite a lot mm-hmm. yeah it's quite a lot right so then it's like if you can't do that i mean maybe it's not a problem because like you might have some fomo you might go look for some stuff but then if you don't have anything then it's fine it's, it's not like you're manufactured forcing it yeah um, it's hmm. it's even better, right? Because you missed out right. once. Now the next day you feel the rigor <laughs> to do it even more. Right. But then I'm thinking like, is is there some kind of action we can add that's like not dependent on external? Maybe. Well, that's less less yeah, like burdensome kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So more know, easy tasks. 
or something e but like not too easy right it doesn't we don't mm -hmm. want things to be too easy but is there some kind of thing and like that's, that's relevant to us too like i don't know whether it's like in, increasing research in a specific area or like mm -hmm. i don't know something like this right like is there something minimal like, that we can add here that like makes sense and like makes people feel like hey i'm doing something and i'm participating in a reward program well and i'm contributing knowledge so there's like a combination mm -hmm. of these things you know that isn't necessarily uh, like let's submit a paper let's post a question mm -hmm. let's post a comment because those are high like we said earlier they're high mm -hmm. uh, energy tasks mm -hmm. um, no if you if like, like this is just initial just an initial gauge right. to see how you feel if you do like the general direction i can come up with a whole bunch of tasks that are mm -hmm more achievable let's say but still meaningful content mm -hmm. yeah i think uh similar to that like it's very interesting like why does the comment feel so scary to leave like what how we don't have anywhere on the site there is no reason when you go on research up to feel that way so why do people feel that way i, I don't know like uh there's something to keep in mind we don't have to answer it right mm -hmm. now yeah, the first the first comment like no re there is a reason people call it like icebreakers right the first thing to do while no one ever when the silent is harder right requires like you have all sorts of anxiety and expectations there is no role model and stuff like that mm. okay uh, just a comment so if you make uh, anything uh, as a game of chance uh, then that directly contradicts the goal of trying to like make it very obvious what sort of actions are you are tied to the rewards that you're getting and mm -hmm. the question that i had is like how do you implement this thing like how do you actually detect this sort of interaction where somebody is leaving a comment and somebody's rewarding it and uh, mm -hmm. then getting the double of that like i'm literally not clear on the like oh how do you make well, it happen? Uh, yeah well right now okay so Right now, the, the the amount of users is kind of low, so I'll just basically I'll track I'll track the live feed, and I'll have a spreadsheet, and I'll see who donated research coin, and I'll see if they are part of the power user program, and I'll reimburse if they are below the two hundred limit. That's how, and and if they leave a comment, right? They, you need to leave a comment because I need a target to support with the research coin. Okay, that's a lot of work. Good luck. <laughs> it is a lot of work. I, I do. If you progress a few slides over, I do have a plan how to make it still a lot of work, but crowdsource it at least. Okay, thanks. And oh, you know, if if it does work out, and you know, if it if it if it's a great in, improvement in the current system, that maybe we can have like some su supportive scripting that will like identify comments of certain type for us for moderators and stuff like that but that in the future all right so yep in a year everyone can become rich other than that so just to reiterate i do think that so lo logging in daily is more powerful than logging in weekly just in terms of habit formation we know it from research uh creating the feeling that the tasks are a limited resource that you need to seize right to be the most efficient user there is this creates this you know hunger for activities instead of them being burdensome on you yeah so my goal is some days you're going to be finished in like 20 minutes somehow you had a very good article in mind and you were already thinking about it a lot and you or you yeah, and you do it, all the activities and you just sit there and like, man, the, like the next task is in 16 hours. That's forever. I can't wait. And if you find yourself thinking, I can't wait, then we already won. <laughs> we want mm -hmm. that feeling. All right. So another thing that I think is currently lacking and that we probably need it for the optics of the Rich. research hub, right, is e exchange of research yeah. coins between yeah. users, right? Yeah. Not only we need it to uh, so show much. that people exchange them, right, for maybe external observers, but also they are all visible in the 
in the in the live feed right and when new users come in they see the they look at the live feed and they they think hey people are actually actively like trading and doing stuff in here this is a community that's alive right it's not some solitary thing where people mm -hmm. uh, write discrepant comments and like i said i think research hub is really a social platform in nature right in a way we don't really create like original content it's it's a it's original in a way but it's their their reactions right their commentaries their discussions right people don't yet write research on the research hub they discuss it right and if it's the strong suit of research hub we should push it right we should push the social interactions um, make people talk to each other that's not a good question i'm sorry I, I, did i already, miss someone you're right there's already an item ID. you're bad i think we're getting a little feedback from your mic right. Okay. Did someone have a question or is it, I still can see it. Uh, no, uh, I just want to say one comment. I like this idea a lot because uh, I like the daily part because it's proven to work with like one of the most popular video games, like Animal Crossing. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys play it. You log into your stupid terminal every day <laughs> and you have to do like a list of tasks mm -hmm. and you get rewarded for it. And like, if you log in every day, Mm -hmm. you basically get a multiplier too so it makes you want to come yeah. back every day um and it worked because um it's one of the best-selling games of all time i i personally hate doing the tasks because i feel <laughs> like i do enough work in real life so i don't like to right. work in the game but it works for the majority so i like that and uh, it works like that analogy. Yeah, Nami, Nami likes the idea of streaks, I know, right? We can definitely introduce some rewards for being consistent with the tasks. Uh, how, how do you become a part of this? Like, is this a limited time ah. for limited users? Great question. Let's talk about it in, in, a, in exactly the next slide. <laughs> All right, so, and another part here is the, the, the gratification is less delayed right so you do something you're rewarded tonight not in a week right so to answer the that's a referral program okay dragon you know what i'm going to talk about your question before we proceed to it the, the so to become the power user right now you will need two people you will need a referrer and you will need the one of the admins of the of the incentive program, which is me, and I'm guessing you. And two of us, we will interview, or not interview, but we'll have a short meeting with a person. It's just just basic sanity check. Are they a real person? Are they they're not spammer? They're not you know they're not a bot, right? They have a name. I'll re I'll write down the name or the pseudonym they use, whatever. Just a basic. This is going to be built on basic human connection, right? So we will have la layers of hierarchy. But if you are a power user, there will always be a person who is, let's say, responsible for you, right? So, you you know, and, and is going to, you know, have an eye on you so you don't go completely bonkers one day. Okay, but more specifics in a moment. All right, so the referral program. Uh, I think we need to expand our core team. Uh, I love you guys, but it's like, what, six of us, seven of us? We need more people and we need this more dedicated uh, users. How? Through a referral program, not the automatic one because that one is getting abused every, every time, right? We only need the manual referral program, a very powerful and motivating one. Well, you, you just saw how, if you sub do all the tasks every day in a year, you can make 300 grand of those coins, which again, I'm not gonna speculate on valuations, but probably a decent chunk of money, right? So to complement this with the referral program, if you re recruit another power user, right? And, and you know it's a successful onboard and they, they join the team and they do the thing, for three months after that, you get 10% of what they are earning, right? So if you get 10 of them, 10 of those, you can double your income in research coin. That's a lot. But also I don't personally believe that, that, that any one of us can like super exploit this system. I don't, I don't have 10 like academic friends who I know will be willing to like super contribute into this. If you have, well, great for you and great for Research Hub actually. 
So, Anton, can I just mm -hmm. interrupt brief briefly? Yep. Uh, so you say you will earn 10% of their income, right? Just just from the power user part, not the part. So I'm not talking about like all this income is this kind of like special on top of like the regular upvotes and everything else uh, people do on research have to earn research coin. But I, I guess it's only for in the beginning because I can <clears throat> imagine if it becomes a regular user and they themselves attract another power user. Then you yep. get ten percent of ten percent. Oh no! Okay, no. So that would be no. It, it shouldn't go recursive, right? It shouldn't. Okay. The the ten percent you're getting from your own refer re, referee mm -hmm. referrer, uh, you don't get that. And also here, uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a timed thing because. We don't want it to scale out of proportion, right? No, so like no, in, no, in no. 10 years, when you have 10K friends you referred, you're going to make bonkers money. That's, yeah. that's probably a little unfair. So it's so, yeah. like six months. Uh, I have a question. So like I know, Anton, this is like uh, mainly for power users. Um, but like you said, the research hub does feel a bit lonely and it would be nice to expose these tasks to the average user. Are you thinking that we'll start with a power user program and then like get a subset of these tasks and uh, advertise them to the average user? Like if it works out? Yeah, that's what I was thinking when you said that you reconsidered about the tasks in the in the corner of the interface. I think we should use this power user program as a, you know, just an experimental ground, right, where we will select the most efficient and the most attractive and the easiest and in mm. tasks that bring the most joy to users and those will make it into the general user population we can scale them down all sorts of stuff but we mm. can also we can also if you, if you want if you care about the no regular users uh we can maybe adjust the rule for the power user thing where you support other users with 200 RC, maybe we can limit it. You you should always support non-power users, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Pretty limited, but it makes makes uh, sure some of the research coin get out of the inner circle. Like we don't want to be viewed as an inner circle thing. That's usually yeah. bad. Exactly. Um, yeah. Totally. Perhaps, perhaps we can discuss it later. What do you think we should be for non power users only or for everyone? Okay, so yeah, if you refer, have a friends, okay, I have it written down, written down here. Uh, who is referring? Who is referrer? Okay, so referent <laughs> is the person who you got, right? So referrer is you. So this is how the onboarding works, right? You the person read the or like you you introduced someone to research hub and the power user program they agree we all meet i write down their name in my little or big spreadsheet and that's it right uh, from now on right so me and the referrer will you know keep an eye on you know at least was it for you know for early time uh, on the new power user, if they are, you know, autonomous and they produce quality content, whatever they can, you know, we, we can keep track on them less. But there are mechanisms. I think I can propose that in the future can be used by the community to to basically strip some power users or even moderators from their uh, from their role. Okay. So, but but basically, yeah, the process is is short interview after they figure out the way to find us. And yeah, you if you have been a referent once, you can't become a referent again, right? I, you have your name. I I remember your face. Probably not going to happen. If it happened, I don't know. You tricked me. You probably would have tricked the the machine learning anti scam system as well <laughs> can't do anything about it. all right so how would we implement this right because uh, like dragon said that's a lot of work good luck well that is a lot of work so i wouldn't do all this work alone 
right? So we should form a hierarchy and everyone gasps, oh, decentralized and hierarchy in the same sentence. Yes, it's true, right? If the hierarchy doesn't end at the owner, it's not that doesn't need to be centralized. Okay, so power users report to hub moderator. And I'm using hub moderator. It's probably an inaccurate title, right? Because I kind of envision moderators doing their own thing, not being busy with tracking all the comments and stuff. But let's say they are right now. So right now, I would be performing all those roles not that they exist like i would just be like the only hub moderators there wouldn't be anyone above me well patrick we have passed <laughs> all right so how does it work the power users basically do their thing do their goals and the hub moderators are in a way they're just secretaries right they 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 keep track of people who uh, who donated coins today who did what and they will you know, go in and support the actions with research coin, right? And importantly, all the actions right now that are, that I propose, they leave a trace behind them, right? So we don't need an extra interface to like send RSC in a secret way be between me and the power user, right? I can just find their comment that posed the question and I can give that comment to 100 RSC, no problem. Now the Problem began, begins when we have too many power users, right? So if I can't keep track of all of them, it becomes burdensome. And obviously at this state, maybe if it's super successful, you guys will probably help me out here and make it easier for me, but making like, I don't know, the comments color differently if they are part of the power user program, something like that, whatever. But we can get more of those. Now, how does this person become who I am? Right, because like I just I just invented this, but obviously you know we will need more people like that. Well, one solution to that could be the introduction of the expertise rating. And what is expertise? It's a reputation that we currently have, but it's hub specific. Right? How do you get it? You, if you found a paper or post that has certain tags in it, right? Let's say it's psychology and neuroscience for me. I, that's what I post mostly. And I leave a comment or something, and people upvote it. That will increase my reputation, but it will also increase my mm, expertise or progression in a given hub. Now you could say, well, there is currently no good system how you know what hubs are considered to be like on a certain paper, right? People just add them arbitrary. It is the case now, but also if you want it, we can we can make a big deal out of it, right? So people can can report like in inaccurate hubs, or people can vote to add more accurate hubs to to a certain paper, you know, if we if we want. So after a user reaches a certain number of expertise in a given hub, right? So notice how I right now I'll just be like overseeing all people, right? I I wouldn't get too deep into your comments, I will just like check for, does this sound interesting for a non-expert? But it can become hub specific, right? So a person get, who has a lot of expertise, who perhaps is already a power user, or more, maybe not even a power user, right? Will request, like will, will apply to become a moderator or for this given hub, right? And then all existing power users on, or all existing uh, moderators would you know, basically have a group interview and vote on whether this person should become the new moderator. And once they are, they do the same thing as I do. We will figure out a way to split the number of people so that I can keep track of my group of people. They can keep track of their group of people. And eventually, I think once we get more and more people and they will specialize in their own hubs, I wouldn't have a need to go outside my hub, right? I would have enough power users within psychology, so I would just I would just work with them, and I wouldn't have to try to understand physics, right? Because physics makes my brain hurt. Okay, and so the same goes the other way around, right? If the person is inactive, right, they can be reported, and then we can bring it to the to the vote, and then maybe they can be demoted or kicked out of the power user program. It's a, it's a sad process, but it needs to exist. 
Another thing that I think we might as well throw in there is that people with high expertise, let's say like we do have some sort of stages or gradations, right? So after you reach a thousand expertise, perhaps you're eligible to, to get into the power user program. After you reach 10,000, perhaps you're eligible for the moderator. Once you reach those milestone, possibly your upvotes become more impactful, right? Because you are such a knowledgeable person in the, in the hub, then maybe if you upvote, it's actually equals to five normal upvotes. But that's that's a bonus. That's actually not part of the progression system. All right, that's all I have. This last part was complicated, and like again, it will probably uh, require a lot of kind of help from the technical side, right? Especially when you mention uh, DA of voting, uh, like. One second, I'll stop sharing so I can see everyone. Yeah, right. that, that's not even available. Uh, but again, like, the, I guess so, so you'll cross that bridge once you get there. It's true, right? I, I tried. So, so Patrick basically said that, you know, like the, the, the development team is busy doing something else. So this particular plan is, oh my, I was presented for way too long. I'm very sorry. So yes, this particular plan and, uh, requires very little like technical involvement, it, it can be made easier, like by color coding stuff and like creating a separate interface where I can see all the power user activity. But it doesn't need to be right now. It's just like if someone had sent a huge amount of REC, I mean, huge is like 200 or 100. People don't do that these days. I will probably know that this is a power user, right? So I, I would say if it's below 20 people, I can handle it. And right now we are below 20 people. And uh, to help frame this a little bit more, like this is like Anton mentioned, like experimental grounds where we think this is a way to basically gather data on how to make better incentives for the Research Hub app itself. And so essentially like every two weeks we'll check in during the community call, see how the incentives are working, like see if it's actually encouraging the type of interactions that we're hoping it will, and then tweak it. So like if for whatever reason, the structure of like the hierarchy that Anton described isn't working, like it can be very plastic and we'll just kind of like stay flexible and do whatever works in the moment. And thank you, Anton, that was awesome. I think that was super complete. And yeah, for me personally, I'm pretty excited. It makes me actually want to write comments. So- Oh, it does? Okay, yeah. actually, I'm <laughs> very curious to see if it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I th also think uh, great work, Anton. I really appreciate it. It's very detailed and it sparks a lot of ideas, which is what you um, kind of want with the presentation. So Thanks, thank Robbie. you for doing that. Cool. Yeah, so just to move to the next topic, um, we're officially starting work trial with Dragon, which is super exciting. And um, what we want to do for the work trial project is to essentially like streamline the upload paper flow. As uh, you know, we got some comments on last week, like it's not super easy. Um, Dr. Bick, even when she like gave us like a user study of Research Hub, all she wanted to do was just add a DOI, not necessarily like have to like dig through a website and stuff in order to comment or post a paper. So um, Dragon's gonna be thinking through how to like make it very, very easy and quick to post content on Research Hub. Um, so Dragon, if you, what we wanted to do for the next like 10 minutes or so is basically just like brainstorm ideas on how we can potentially improve the upload flow. Um, I can share my screen now and just like walk through the exact thing just to show what happens. Can you guys see? Yes. Yeah. Cool. So I just grabbed like a, a random paper from JAMA Internal Medicine. This is a journal article or a journal that I posted another paper from earlier today. Um, so first things first, new post button, top of the right screen. When it comes up, I have a couple options. So I have to think about what exactly I want to post. Continue. Link to the paper. I'm already used to this, so I grab the URL. Um, sometimes people are more used to like adding PDFs or DOIs, like Dr. Vic said. So I add that. We have a spinner. Editorialized title, jargon-free version of the title that the average person would understand. So now I have to think about exactly how I want to editorialize this uh, paper before it's submitted. Hubs, what hubs does it apply to? Type down, it's from JAMA Internal Medicine, so internal. 
no internal medicine. I guess here we go, internal medicine. And then the DOI is automatically populated. Submit another spinner. The hubs just got removed. And then here we go. Um, I'm on the paper page now. The authors have been automatically extracted. Um, this looks a little bit empty up at the top. We have an abstract, but it's not the full abstract. If you go to the uh, actual paper, maybe this one doesn't have a full abstract. I picked an editorial instead of an actual paper, so that is right. But yeah, so that's the whole upload flow. Um, does anybody have any thoughts on how we can potentially make that easier for people? So also just to mention for a comparison, I got research compared it with research, uh, sorry, research gate and uh, academia edu, and basically they, uh, if it's okay to just briefly share the screen. Uh, you can see the screen, right? Yep, looks good. Uh, and basically, so. This is Research Hub, and on Academia Edu, they simplified the first step basically to just uploading the papers, and they will try to populate all the data in kind of the next step, or let you add all of those if you click No File to Upload. And ResearchGate has kind of a bunch of different types that you can upload, uh, and then again, it's some sort of form, uh, and actually didn't totally figure out where the uploading was, I uh, probably missed it. Uh, one interesting thing to note is that uh, both of their CTA buttons, uh, like call to action buttons, are add new, uh, which I guess is less confusing uh, than what Research Hub has, uh, because Research Hub's CTA is new post, and I think just Elizabeth Bick did mention, like, where do I post a paper and not a post? So yeah, that's an interesting one. Yeah, that's good. I think that's good rewarding, easy fix. Yeah. Uh, so, so some of the ideas that the team mentioned uh, as well uh, yesterday uh, were perhaps uh, asynchronous uploading of uh, files if the file is too large. Uh, so you can go to other screen, visit other websites, whatever. Uh, just continue browsing across Research Hub so you don't have to wait the entire upload. Uh, the interesting thing is that both ResearchGate and uh, Academia Edu don't have that. So they are fully kind of synchronous. You're just sitting there while the file is being uploaded. Uh, and the idea for Research Hub would be you get a notification once the file is uploaded, like here's a paper page, and then you can fill out the additional details, for example, or something like that. Uh, so that could improve the experience. But again, like maybe if you are currently investing yourself into uploading details of the paper on like the paper itself, uh, maybe you really want to just sit it out and, uh, and just wait it out. Uh, and again, you probably, like in most cases, you aren't uploading hundreds of megabytes of data. And there's actually a limit on Research Hub currently of 15 megabytes for file uploads. Uh, which is not enforced, which is quite an interesting one. Uh, so you can still upload larger files, uh, but like in huge number of cases, you won't be waiting for too long either way. Um, and yeah, the, so just kind of the, the view, kind of the angle that I took is let's see what people are familiar with uh, from other websites as well. And they all have this kind of multi step process, and they all have kind of this very uh, similarly shaped steps. So like you upload the thing, uh, and then you edit the details, and then you are on the page of the paper. So uh, I know if any of you had any uh, wishes or uh, some opinions of what could be changed and improved, something that you didn't enjoy, more than welcome to hear that feedback. Yeah, personally, I That's think that. the eight, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, personally, I think the async solution is like a bit overkill. If I wanted to continue using the site, for example, since Research Hub is a web app, I would just like uh, command click like the logo and open it in like a different tab or something, and then continue using the site there and then click back to like the first tab and see if it's like finished uploading or something. Seems mm -hmm. like pretty natural to me. Like I would do that on like YouTube or something. Yeah. Okay, uh, there's a solution for that. So uh, we can, 
try to do synchronous action, but we can detect when the user has left. Uh, so if they left, then we can actually spawn an additional notification. So like it's synchronous by default, but if they even accidentally leave, we can still ping them that everything is still fine. So there's you know, that maybe. Well, the, the thing about it being synchronous is usually if someone's waiting for more than like even like three seconds, four seconds, they think the website's broken. Oh, especially uh, like if if someone's waiting for 10, 20 seconds, you will have thought the website is broken. You have left by that point. So that's the biggest problem with the synchronous approach. Yeah. Well, uh, the thing that I noticed can... is, for example, sorry for interrupting, but the other websites have progress bar. So like you can see how far along it is. Uh, so maybe that would help just so you can see, well, it's not stuck. It's just doing its thing. Yeah, and even even if progress bars are like a bit too uh, like too much work, you can just say like this process might take a minute or something. That's a pretty common pattern as well. Yeah. So you're just describing like the logistics of uploading your own file, right? As opposed to populating with a, with a link from another website, correct? Or both. Like I don't know, I don't know how frequent people upload their own PDFs. Like where, why do they have PDFs? If you're an author, why do you have a PDF? <laughs> oh, uh, actually, in my experience, like from talking people that are uh, that are researchers, a lot of them have a, a lot of PDFs on their computers and probably a lot of dupl duplicates. They at least want to manage them with uh, some reference manager, Zotero, Mendeley. Uh, yeah, so they are still storing. Dota area can lead you back to the website. So the, the, we used to have, like people used to post, uh, create create uh, entries on research hub based on the their PDFs. The problem with that was they would post a lot of junk, right? They would be like, post an instruction manual to a vacuum cleaner and be like, okay, that's yeah. good. Most people won't post a PDF either. Most people post a link. And I think that we should keep it that way because it's easier. Yeah. Dragon or, or a DOI. Time, yeah. Dragon, you last time you presented an extension, that would actually be something I would really like to use if there was like Zot almost like Zotero extension, right? So where you go on the page on the website with, with the article and you click it and then it creates a page in Research Hub for you. I would 100 percent I would switch to it and never look back. Well, that's a very useful feedback because there was a suggestion of that type exactly. Yeah, I think the extension thing is awesome, but um, it's good for, I guess, certain users that know Research Hub really well. Uh, like you, Anton, it will be awesome for you, but uh, maybe like for new users, I'm thinking probably not going to install the extension. But it's definitely it's something that I also brainstormed. I like that, that idea. I, I'm all for it. Just uh, wanted to throw it in there. Uh, just quick suggestion. Uh, where you have to get about how to add papers? Like, have you have do you have users that are putting DOI in the search bar and just like saying no, this article is not found, and that can be converted in posting paper. So, um, I don't know how, but yeah, that should be done. I think right now. Yeah, that's says, a good point. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. I think uh, to follow up on that, I, I frequently encounter situations. So the research hub that is not, it's not very cooperative with certain websites like JAMA, uh, particularly, and so, some some others. Sometimes I like I post a link, and it thinks for a while, and it's like no, not found. And then instead of the link, I put in the DOI, you know, not in the DOI form, but the, in the link because the DOI is also a link. And then it finds a paper for you. So if there would be like more instructions for what to do in case of the error, that would be great because like I, I'm I'm usually confused. Like what do I do? Do I try again to give up on this particular article? Yeah, uh, one thing that uh, we noticed as well is that, uh, for example, submission guidelines are at the top of the dialogue for uploading papers, uh, which is totally inconsistent with all the other pages for creating uh, basic primitives on the website where you have guidelines on the side. And we can actually use that additional uh, space area to exactly give you some examples and tell you and like help you what to do in different uh, scenarios. So yeah, good point. Um, 
Okay, uh, if no additional feedback, then let's just stop it there. Uh, thanks for sharing this, super useful. Yeah, thank you, Dragon. Um, and thanks everybody for the feedback. So the last thing that I wanted to mention is that we just about have the first version of the ELN ready to ship to put on production. And the way that we're thinking about this in order to like get actual user feedback from basically a beta test without necessarily making Research Hub more confusing is we're gonna create a whitelist of users who have access to the ELN from the Research Hub homepage and only show that to the specific users that you know we know are in the beta test and are here to help provide feedback. For instance, the Quibit Lab at UCLA. So um, what I want to do is open it up to anybody here. Like if you guys want to play around with the ELN, um, just let me know. Um, I know everybody's username here, so I'd be able to add you regardless. But if you have like any friends or anybody who you think would be able to provide quality feedback, um, just let me know. Like, DM me their email address and we'll add them to the whitelist. That way they can like play around with it and potentially uh, give us feedback as well. I'll also post this like in the community chat just to open it up. Um, but yeah, basically, if you want to use it, just let us know so that way we can add your email to the whitelist. Um, yeah, and so that's pretty much it. I think that's it for this week. A uh, pretty long community call, but I think it's super exciting. So thank you, Anton, for doing that whole presentation. I think it's going to be like actually a huge growth mechanic for us. So thanks for, thanks for the feedback, guys. It was very helpful. Cool. All right. Until next week. See everybody later. See you guys. See you guys.